and I sat there thinking, maybe I was the pageant queen all along. Hi, Ugly. It's me, Pussy. And welcome back to Hot or Rat. And today we'll be reviewing episode 13 of RuPaul's Drag Race season 14. Our queens were challenged to roast the hilarious Ross Matthews and on the runway, the category was too, too, too much. And we'll be ranking our queens from rottest rat to hottest hot based on how I thought they did in the episode. Scored out of a total 10 flames, five for the runway and five for the challenge. And this episode starts with all of our queens talking about the impending arrival of the finale. Yet we still have seven girls. So in a shocking twist, RuPaul gave the chop to two of them. And we've got a lot to talk about today, but first I was hoping y'all could help me pick out some new glasses from Warby Parker, the sponsor of today's video, who, if you didn't know, makes stylish and affordable prescription eyeglasses starting at just $95 with a no obligation, totally free at home try on program. Here's how it works. First, visit warbyparker.com slash fussyqueen and take their online quiz, which will help suggest frames that you may like. Then pick five pairs to be shipped to your door for free. You'll get to spend five full days trying on the different pairs. Just send them back using the prepaid shipping label after you found your winner. Here's my selections. The Durand and Whiskey Tortoise, kinda hot. Then we've got the Simons in gold. Okay, very hot. And my personal favorite, the Yorks in rose gold. These are hot. But I was still having trouble picking my favorites, so I decided to text my friends and see what they thought. Z noped the Durands and preferred the Yorks, but my girlies group chat loved the Simons the most. So to make my final decision, I've decided to ask the audience, that's you. Let me know which ones you like better down in the comments below. The Yorks or the Simons? I'll order whichever y'all prefer. Oh, and by the way, Warby Parker also has physical retail locations, and you can find them by clicking the link in the description of this video and visiting warbyparker.com slash bussyqueen. Warby Parker also makes sunglasses, offers several brands of contacts, and you can even renew your prescription for just $15 using their virtual vision test. So don't wait any longer. Click the link in the description of my video to visit warbyparker.com slash bussyqueen to try five new frames for yourself for free. Thanks, Warby Parker, for sponsoring today's video. Now in the words of famed comedian Geometric, let's knock some rocks together so we can start a fire and get this roast a cooking. Am I right? <laughs> oh, we really did not get that this episode, did we? Coming in at the rottest of my rots tonight is Deja Sky. So this episode did start by reminiscing on the lip sync assassin title that RuPaul kind of gave her pretty early on in the season. Unfortunately, or fortunately for her, we never got to see if that title would ring true later until now. But more on that at the end of today's video. In the roast, all I can really say about her jokes were that they were weird? I really don't know how else to describe them. But I think what really did me in for Deja was like the sound effects that she was making. For example, when she was talking about Michelle washing herself and then the barking that she did for Ross Matthews and the air horn that she did. What was that? She was like a live soundboard. <laughs> And maybe she was just trying to tap into her successful little John from Snatch Game, but that was a big mistake. Honey, you got a big storm coming. I was also shocked that she heard Michelle and Dulce tell her, do not use this joke, do not use that joke. Yet, she used those jokes anyways. Now that is comedy. Deja's roast was a rough, rough, <laughs> rat. And over on the runway for too, 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 too much, she really gave too, too little. Too, too little John? <laughs> I will say though, generally speaking here, she looks really pretty and put together, even if, you know, the garment is a little unfitted. I think what she was really missing here was a concept. So many of the other queens reached for the sky while she stayed on the ground floor. And on TV, boring is pretty much the worst mistake you can make, even if you look pretty. This look was a rat. Next up, you say hello to this, I say goodbye to this. Or I should say RuPaul says goodbye to this. Cute exit line. Anyways, this <laughs> Rose kind of had me fooled at first because I found myself laughing at her jokes. But then I realized after the second or third time through that I was actually laughing at her, not with her, which is really not the kind of comedy that you want to be giving in a RuPaul's Drag Race comedy challenge. I will say though, Georges was one of the only queens to truly go in on Ross, like harder than anybody else. There was the turkey gobble joke and also the weight joke about losing the baby that I guess Michelle gave her. All misses in her comedy set considered though, I will say there were a couple of hits and RuPaul was laughing at her as well, even if I think it was at her and not with her. But for all the funny moments, the editors sure were ready to add some little shady zing zing noises every time she said something. Hmm. But alas, editing tricks or not, this was a rat. 
and over on the runway. She has a tutu on. Is it too, too much? No, no, it's not, not, but it's something, something. Michelle enjoyed this, of course, because it's kind of an 80s reference with the Madonna-esque vibes that Michelle pointed out. I was also getting maybe a little Janet Jackson inspiration with the leather and the chains, but I didn't totally understand why she styled what was essentially a pretty tutued tool cocktail dress with these harsher biker accessories. Like what was the full storyline of what was happening? It kind of felt to me that she just wanted to switch it up on the runway and not just give a pretty dress and this is where we ended up. Like had she, for example, put some of that leather and chains and all of the, you know, butch excitement of the butchiness into the tutu, maybe this could have been a more cohesive look. Plus I feel similarly to Georgia says I did about Deja tonight. It's pretty, but it's not really too, too much. Give me more. Give me, give me more. This was a rat. Next up, I've been dying to taste her roast. <laughs> You know, Daya kind of shocked me with how painfully unfunny this was, but I don't think it was just the nerves that she announced she had at the beginning of her roast when she told the judging panel that she was terrified. It really was the drum and drool of all the words that she was using and the setup that she was building and the things that she was saying and the... You get my point. It just felt like there were so many layers of this onion that you had to grab onto. <laughs> Okay, I'll stop and peel back before you actually found the joke. But when we finally did get to those punchlines, there were some okay zingers in there. However, for those funny jokes that there were, they were ruined for me as a viewer by hearing them in rehearsal, which I do want to say probably was an editing trick to dull the effect of her comedy roast. But as we heard it, this roast was over marinated, overthought. It was an over rot on the runway. What is she wearing today? She said her too, too much look is made out of recycled materials, which I was a little confused by at first. Maybe she was saying that like the world's consumerism habits are too much and there's too much waste. So let's use the too, too much waste to create an outfit. She was also playing, I think, into the too, too much part by wearing those heels that brought her like 11 more inches too, too tall. I will say this look was not as impactful as it maybe should have been. And I think that was mostly because of the stage lights. Some of the pinks and golds in this look really just faded away. And it wasn't until the cameras zoomed in that you could see all those really great details. For example, the hair being woven into a hem of the jacket, all those carefully placed bows and the distressed tights. Oh, and uh, Deja's crown from last week's runway that she, I guess, recycled into this look. There is something I'm still wanting Daya to do with proportionizing because she is such a tall, gorgeous glamazon and that tallness and height I think requires a special attention to blowing out the proportions of the other parts of the outfits and clothes that you're wearing. But don't get me wrong, the bitch is stunningly hot. Next up, Angeria Paris. It's not that your jokes aren't funny, I'm just not laughing. Van Michaels. In the roast, I was so excited for Angeria because she gives us so many funny little confessionals and every time the camera pans over to her throughout pretty much any episode, she is giving us some kind of reaction in her face that is hilarious. But that natural sense of humor she has wasn't necessarily harnessed into joke writing for this particular instance. I will say though, there is a lot to be said for the level of confidence that this queen has because it's hard she was flopping in some of those moments, she never buckled under the pressure. And maybe that's her pageant world training showing through, or perhaps she was just born with a steel nerve. And extra points, not only to Angeria, but really all of the queens for performing their comedy sets to essentially an empty audience. Yeah, remember back in the day, there actually used to be people sitting down there on the stage reacting to your set as you were going, so you could kind of feel the temperature of the audience and decide where to go next. Girl, in these episodes, it is to those four judges on the panel, that's it. Overall, I would say this roast was plated beautifully, but ultimately undercooked. It was a rat. And over on the runway, how about a little pageant tutu for your nerves? I absolutely adored the traditional yet non-traditional take on this category using what would be like a traditional ball gown, except adding layers of tulle to create a couple different tutus throughout the length of the dress. She's giving me beautiful layered wedding cake. And if we're gonna be doing a little sisterhood of the traveling wig with Anjuria's hair to Dulce, I think I will be claiming to borrow it next. And I did score this look four out of five hot flames only because I think to get that last final fifth flame, I wanted to see something truly revolutionary like we did with a couple of the other concepts on the runway tonight. But this is a solid, gorgeous <laughs> from Anjuria and I honestly expect no less at this point. Next up, Boshko, 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 Boshko. 
in the roast. Firstly, I love the look that she's wearing. This red plaid thing is probably one of the best things she has worn the entire competition. The hair is phenomenal. This is actually some hair that I think we saw from her Instagram back when we were reviewing the cast promo looks. And I was just sitting there thinking like, yeah, you're funny, but damn girl, where have these looks been? Why have we just been wearing the straps every week? But concerning her roast, she did take the fall and open the roast tonight, which I think is a really brave thing to do. And I overall thought that she did a great job. I honestly didn't expect her not to though, because she was so funny in the panel. However, I must bring up that while her roast was tasty, I don't think that it was very fresh. It's more like seconds. The meat of it relied on that I'll show you versatility win joke line that we heard all the way back in season six from Bianca Del Rio. Borrowed setup aside though, I do think that she had some of the best zingers and quick punch lines. Like she really did a great job of like jokes per minute. So I'll say that overall this roast was hot and tasty. And over on the runway, I guess you could say we saw this coming. We've been seeing that little saw outfit in the corner of the workroom every time they go back in for Untucked for a few weeks now. I think conceptually speaking, this was a great take on this runway. It's a really unexpected twist, I think, to go into the horror glam arena for a category like Tutu, which would traditionally rely on beauty and simple elegance. Plus her makeup is great. I love that she did the blue coming down the face and the headpiece and shoulder pieces are also really great ways to finish out the top part of that look. But when you really take a gander at this look, it feels a little unfinished. I think she needed a little bit of that red stoning that she did on the top on the tights and maybe tips of the shoes as well. Because you think if you were sawed in half, you might have blood on the top part and bottom of your garments. I think she deserves a lot of points for creativity though. This final look, I'm going to give a three flame sought. Sought. Sought? Sought. Is that pun work? Hot. Hot saw. Saw. Ooh, hot saw. Seesaw. It's hot. <laughs> Next up, it's lady time. Miss Campton closed our show, and I think she started off great. She showed us a strong blend of good delivery, cleverness, and keeping things simple enough for everyone to understand. However, I think she found herself tripping a bit in the end because she kept reiterating the setup of her joke, and it was kind of a long one, and when you have to repeat that same setup, and I was yelling into the deep open holes, and then the echo came back, and the echo said, it gets a little winded and tired, just like Ross Matthews' asshole. <laughs> Oh God. The first time though with the echo, it was hilarious. And you know, she just needed to keep it a little more short and sweet. She wasn't the best, but she also wasn't the worst tonight. So I'm gonna say this roast was a very safe hot. And over on the runway, could we have had a better runway category for Lady Camden, the ballerina? I don't think so. This is easily Lady Camden's best look. This is the most beautiful she's looked. And I think she looks the most beautiful of any of the girls tonight. This look is just <sighs> breath takingly stunning. And while some of the girls might have maybe had more interesting concept, pretty much nobody, except Willow, who we'll talk about here in a second, had as good execution as she did. From that perfectly sculpted hair to the way the stones and the beading work on the outfit and the way she sold it on the runway with her natural ballerina movements. We simply did not deserve the elegance that she gave us in this. This look was in ballerina terms on point and um, I'm thinking about when Georges said that RuPaul was in diapers and she said it's funny because it's true. Can't stop thinking about it. But let's go on to Willow Pill. In the challenge, she went right after Georges, which was a very careful strategic move on her part. Girl, the way she slipped that in there when Georges was talking about going second and Willow goes, I'll go next. I'll go after Georges. Please volunteer. Hello. Me, right after Georges, thank you. Strategy, she has been doing those little subtle strategic moves throughout the entire season and been quiet about it. <laughs> the other queens are just like turning a blind eye. But strategic or not, Willow had a great set, a great set. <laughs> I actually think she had some of the smartest jokes tonight. However, I don't really think that's the type of humor that RuPaul and the other judges are looking for. Dare I say her jokes were too smart? Because I kind of realized if you're not really thinking about what she's saying, you might miss some of the humor, which is really just kind of Willow's strategy in a lot of things. She's not always looking for the hardest punch. She's looking for that sucker punch. Great movie, by the way. Don't blink or you'll miss her. This roast was hot. And over on the runway, good. God, this serve, this look, 
I remember her seeing a tweet from Aquaria of several weeks back, and she was like, doesn't anyone like turn looks anymore? And yeah, some of the runways this season have been a little lackluster, but Willow has, uh, she's had the heat on high, like pretty much every single week. But for as cool as some of her other looks has been, this is like the magnum opus of Willow's runways. She said, you want too much? I will give you too, too much. Too much plastic surgery. The lips are too, too big. The cheeks are too, too big. The glamour, the opulence, the, I'm, the, the opera gloves and binoculars. It really is too, too much. Again, there is a smartness behind everything that Willow does and this was breathtaking. This look is simply too, too hot. But now let's talk about what the judges thought. The winner this week is Bosco, which I think was justifiable. However, I kind of saw that coming from a mile away. Literally before the roast even started in my reaction of this episode over on Patreon, I called it. As far as who's gonna win, I kind of think Bosco might win this. She just got what I think was a very, very obvious winner's edit this episode. And again, for as being as quick and funny as she was and opening the roast, I think she deserves it. But truthfully, none of the roasts blew me away. And the challenge was mostly unmemorable, except for Deja barking. I think the only queen whose comedy set I wanted to hear more of was Willow's. And in the bottom, not two, but three tonight is Deja, Daya, and Georges. So this was a fun little gag at the end of the episode. However, <laughs> just because we've had all these girls in so many episodes near the end of the season and we've just been watching them basically do challenge after challenge like this exact group of girls, it kind of just was like, okay, yeah, it's probably about time to lose two of them. Like, let's get them going and get this finale filmed. But despite wanting to see more than one queen go this episode, I do think that Georges of the three was the most edited or produced to be in the bottom, whereas Ty and Deja pretty much flatlined. And concerning this three-way lip sync to Olivia Rodrigo's Good For You, I did react to it over on my Patreon at patreon.com slash bussyqueen. That's my members only website where my patron family gets exclusive member benefits like early access to my YouTube videos, <gasps> access to exclusive videos, and access to the Bussy Queen Discord. And you can join by clicking the link in the description of this video. See you there. Honestly, <laughs> this episode was so obvious as soon as that lip sync came on, I said, oh, this is Daya's song. They're gonna keep her no matter pretty much what happens because like she's our punk rock girl and here's a little punky rocky song. But that doesn't mean that she didn't have to perform to stay. I'm just saying it was kind of like, Okay. She gave the right facial choreography and she's got the attitude and vibe to fit the song where as Georges felt a little out of place here, her tight choreo did not fit with what was going on and Deja Sky was there. In one of Daya's confessionals, she said the song was about being pissed off and that she just had to tap into that emotion. And I thought, great, she just has to think about Jasmine Kennedy. So I do ultimately agree with the judge's decision here and Daya stays and we now have a top five. But I think we all know the real reason that Miss Deja Sky was in the bottom was because of RuPaul's nose. And it's time for my hottest hots. The moment you've all been waiting for. In the roast, I don't have one. Nobody reached five flames, I'm so sorry. But on the runway, I choose Willow Pill. I also asked my patrons to vote on their hottest hots and this week they've chosen Bosco in the roast, Lady Camden on the runway. As always, I wanna say thanks to you for watching today's video. And I wanna give a huge thanks to today's video sponsor, Warby Parker. You can check out using the link in the description of this video. You'll get to try five pairs of glasses at home for free under no obligation to buy. So help out the channel, click the link in the description and get you some new frames to try on at home. Thanks. And of course, I want to say thanks to my generous patrons who make my channel possible. And I want to give a special shout out to Sebastian Mmm, Sean Flynn, In, Lauren Love, XX, and Mia Gagney, who've all just joined my Patreon of the hottest hot and hot tears, and Angel, Cyrus, Dark Sided Otter, Tiki, Felicia, JB, Jeffrey, Joseph, Josh, Mark, Chant, JP in Dallas, Laura, Sets, Mark James, Matthew Burns, Matthew Bauer, Maxi Low, Wow, Michelle, your bell, Miss F, Neely, Ryan Beats, Sailor, Steven, Topher, Triton, and Wheelie, who are all supporting me in my Bussy Queen collector tier. See y'all later. Love ya. Bye. Um, butthole. Pee pee poo poo. Pee pee poo poo. Mwah.